This section is over graphing polynomial and rational inequality. In the last chapter, we've been working up to graphing polynomial and rational equations. And so this section is basically just one step beyond that, an extension of that. So let's review what we know so far. So we know what a polynomial looks like. It looks like a string or a sentence of expressions where they're all nice operations. So we have multiplication, we have exponents, and then addition and subtraction, but nothing fancy beyond that. We know rational has the prefix ratio, and so we know those are going to come as fractions. And so we have, again, in this last chapter, discussed how to graph all polynomial functions and how to graph all rational functions. So instead of them being in function format like we see here, we're going to put them in inequality format. So we are going to set them up as an equation, but instead of the equal sign, we're going to see it being put in one of these inequalities. And all the properties of these are the same, but we just know that they all mean something different. Less than, greater than, less than, equal to, or greater than, equal to. And so the formal definition of a polynomial inequality is just like this that we see here, where we have a polynomial expression and it is set less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to a number. Now in this case, I have zero in all of these places. Just note that our expression might not start out as zero, but we can manipulate it so we can get zero on the other side of the equation. So for an example, we have this one here, a polynomial expression on the left, x squared minus 4x minus 5, and then the inequality part is greater than 0. Now, I just picked one of the inequalities here, but any one of them could go there, and it's all going to be interpreted the same way. Just the answer is a little bit different. So let's go back and let's look at how did we do with this, how did we graph polynomials when they were in function format? And then we're going to use that process to take it that one step farther to see how does it change if it's an inequality format. Well, we know to graph polynomials, we first look at the end behavior, what's happening on the very left and the very right of the graph. And that also will give us an image of what maybe the middle part of the graph should look like. Um, the specific points, like the y-intercept and the x-intercept. And then we might fill in any missing pieces using any of the information that we know here. And then we can put all of that information, part one through four, on the graph. And if we still feel like we're missing something, then we can always plot as many ordered pairs as needed. And then, of course, I would always suggest that you double check this by graphing it. Okay, so we're going to do a review example. We're going to graph this polynomial function. f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. So the steps that I've outlined is the end behavior, y-intercept, x-intercept, and then anything else that we might need for that particular function. So I want you to pause the video, and I want you to come up with every single thing that you can come up with on this function, and then use that information to come up with the graph of this function. And then after you unpause the video, you'll come back and you'll confirm that you have the correct answer. Okay, now the first step that I've outlined it is the end behavior. And if we follow the exact format of this, we see that this is a positive x squared, my leading term. And so we know that this is positive even. And so the left is going up and the right is going up. But we should also be able to determine more than that. This one is a quadratic function, degree 2. So we should know more than just left up, right up. We should know that this graph is a parabola. And we should know that the whole shape of this graph is a u. And since my leading term is positive, then my u is going to be opening up. So I automatically know what this graph is going to look like. I just need to figure out where it's graphed on my actual axes. OK, so that's what my intercepts are going to help me out with. Then my y-intercept, so I plug in 0 for x, and everything cancels out except for my constant term. So my y-intercept is at 0, negative 5. My x-intercept, 
I do my x-intercepts by taking my equation, and I set that equation equal to zero. This is going to be the most similar stuff what we're doing from polynomial functions and what we're going to be doing with polynomial inequalities. And so we'll actually be doing this exact same step in polynomial inequality. So you see why this is just kind of a precursor step into what we'll actually be doing in this section. All right, to solve quadratics, we can do it lots of different ways. My first choice is factoring, but you can also solve it by using the quadratic formula or even completing the square. I'm going to go ahead and factor this one since it factors quite nicely. x minus 5 and x plus 1. And so those gives me the solutions of x equals positive 5 and x equals negative 1. So if I were to put this in intercept format, my, my answer to part 3 would be negative 1, 0 and positive 5, 0. So let's see if this is enough information to give me not only the shape of my graph, because I already know that, but also where this graph fits on our axes. So we have a y-intercept at negative 5. We have an x-intercept at negative 1, and then we have another x-intercept at positive 5. So we might have a good start to this, but I think that we're missing the most important point. We know a parabola has a vertex here. So if I want to get a precise part of this, I might need to do part 4, which is additional information. And in this step, that is, where's my vertex at? So I'm going to use my vertex formula, negative b over 2a, and then f of that value that I find for my first coordinate. So negative b over 2a is negative, negative 4, over 2 times 1, gives me positive 4 divided by 2, which is 2, and then I plug that 2 back into my original equation. So 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 5, gives me 4 minus 8 minus 5, or negative 4 minus 5 gives me negative 9. So that tells me my vertex is at 2, negative 9. Okay, so there I can draw more tick marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So now my vertex is at 2, negative 9. And now I can hopefully get a clear picture of the symmetrical parabola. And it should look something like that. And so if my tick marks are all consistent, which you can see that they're not here, we should see that this is very symmetrical. Okay, so we've graphed this graph here. And now the question is, is how does this actually help us with a polynomial inequality? So I'm going to do this exact same thing, same expression over here on the left, x squared minus 4x minus 5, and I put it in the inequality format. I want to know where this one is greater than 0. Well, the thing to know with this greater than 0 is it's always going to be representing my x-axis. So basically, I want to know where my graph is greater than or where it is above my x axis. And so since I can come up with a graph of this, which I just did in the last slide, I can now identify where it is above my x-axis. And that is right here. It's above the x-axis. And here, it's above my x-axis. And so these two parts of the graph are going to be my answer to this inequality. Okay, so all we need to do at this point is we need to identify what our answer is. Now, the answers here will either be an interval notation, which means an interval, left to right, smallest to largest, or in set builder notation. And you can use whatever more is comfortable with you. If the homework or a quiz or an exam specifies, make sure you do what it specifically tells you. Okay, so basically we are looking for all of the x values where our graph is above the x-axis. So I'm going to start with my right one. It's a little easier to see. I can see that this x value here is where it's starting to be above my x-axis. So I would say from 5. 
And then I see every x value beyond that. Notice this graph is never going to stop and it's going to continue to be above the x axis in this direction. And so my answer is going to be all the way to infinity. Now, infinities are always curved. And since this one is just greater than, my 5 will also be a curved parenthesis. If this was greater than or equal to, then my answer would be a bracket here or an inclusion. So that's my right-hand side. Let me talk about my left-hand side. So I see it starts to be above my x-axis right here, which is negative 1. And then I see it's forever to the left. So forever to the left is represented by negative infinity. And then it stops being above the x-axis right here at negative 1. And again, curved parenthesis because it is just greater than. And so, in these two parts of the graph is where my inequality is above the x-axis, hence where my inequality is greater than zero. Now, it might be easy to visualize at this step, but it might be hard to determine what intervals I come up with. So, in the next couple of examples, we're actually going to be determining the intervals first, and then we'll be checking with our graph second. And so hopefully the intervals are going to be much more easier to come up with there on your own. And so that's what we're going to be working on in the next video.